Eh, una amiga, una amiga me dijo que aquí había mucho embroide y que como a mí me gustaba el bordado, que entonces me viniera para acá, que aquí era donde había más embroide, más bordado. If, if they go, but they still have to actually start with my grandfather. My grandfather was a, a farmer in a, in a small town in, in Switzerland at the time when the, when the uh, what, what do you call the mechanic uh, revolution started, you know, when, when everybody... And before that, in, in the area, the, the women would make embroidery by hand. They, they, they invented the hand loom machine, the hand embroidery machine, which actually duplicated, duplicated the, the, the hand stitching, 100% duplicated. The Schiffle machine came along, which is the, the second stage, which is the machine which works in the same principle as a sewing machine. Embroidery is one of the national treasures of Switzerland. Um, if you think of Switzerland, you think of chocolate. You think of skiing, uh, you think of embroidery or, or uh, you know, those, those fine textiles that exist there. My grandfather came from Switzerland with the trade in the early 1920s and uh, to make a better life for him and his, his family. <clears throat> and at that time there was a, a, a blooming embroidery business here. I studied in my pueblo, después in the capital. Y de ahí viajé a Estados Unidos por el gran sueño americano. Well, the story goes that uh, that there is a lot of rock in this area, and that they they put the machines on solid rock, and uh, to give them a good good footing. More important than that was that we were close to Manhattan, the uh, middle of the Garmin Center, and it was easy for the manufacturers to run into New York and see their customers. My father had a uh, embroidery shop on 21st Street in Union City many, many years ago. At that time I was uh, in high school and of course you, uh, you worked after school for a few hours and uh, I started to learn my trade as an apprentice there. This area was so well known for manufacturing embroidery, everyone that you knew in some fashion was had an association with the industry. That, that's how it used to be years ago. It's like a mom and pop shop, they call it mom and pop shop. But, you know, from the embroidery, it's a lot of different uh, immigration is, uh, is, is passed, you know. Su segunda familia, porque en la casa su primera y aquí toda su segunda familia, porque es donde más uno pasa. The, the average day for the, the average owner and worker was 12 hours. We couldn't keep up with the work. It, but if you love the trade, you do it. You know, it wasn't, a, I think 99% of us, the old timers, you know, like the dinosaurs like me, I, I believe that they, uh, they did it because they loved it. I can still remember all my punchings. I can, I can tell you if it's mine just by looking at it. I remember every one. In a mechanical machine, I would have to punch every stitch here. You see it here? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, now. Entonces que en la otra acá se encuentra con la barra para apretar la tela. Ahí no, ahí tú la programa y solamente aprieta el botón y ya. Y queda más. We old timers have always felt that embroidery should look not perfect. It should look like grandma made it up in the attic with a needle. Well, they, they still look upon it as, as almost handmade. Mm -hmm. and, and it is a cottage industry. It is, even though it is a machine, you are still individually, each needle is stitching a thread onto a fabric. But invariably, everybody did have a specialty. They would have a niche. We, um, there's a neighbor we have next door that only does military patches, and that's her niche. That was her parents' niche as well. That was where they, they developed their specialty. Ours was more lingerie. I think one of his largest customers in the beginning was um, they did slips 
undergarments, you know, underdresses. And on these slips were beautiful. It was all Trico. And on, on the slip, it was beautiful embroideries on it. As I said, I had a love for bridal gowns and uh, I did some for Wear Away. These are Shifley Venice laces made in New Jersey. Uh, we contract them to stitchers over there uh, with our yarn. Uh, these are made specifically for the theatrical industry. Yeah, these are made on a, uh, a dissolvable fabric. So in other words, this, um, this is stitched on the machine, on a fabric, and then the fabric is boiled away, and it just leaves this. So we do a lot of this. Actually, I would say over 50% of this product is, is, is manufactured in this shop. Trabajamos con compañías grandes como Missilane, um, Charline, um, Barbie Song. You take a lot of pride in what you do, and, and that's why he came up where pride and craftsmanship is alive and well. I mean, nothing can state it better than that, because that's, that's truly what we did. I've enjoyed every day coming to work. I, I, I love to uh, stand by the machines and watch them work, you know, and see the see your own work being made. Uh, me gusta hacer de todo, arreglar los diseños nuevos. Esto es como mi casa. La fábrica es como mi casa. I like I like uh, all aspects of the industry. I always did. No, uh, aprendí sola porque me gusta mucho. Y como tenía mucha idea también de mi país porque en mi país se trabaja mucho el bordado, pues me gusta mucho. Tire block actually was made for specifically for Shifley Embroidery people. Every building here had factories in it. I think now there's about two that are left out of the maybe 20 or so that are here. So it's sort of indicative of what's happened in our industry. It's been a good run, but now it's over. It's a shame. What do you mean by that? Well, well it's over. It's over because uh, there's n there is no more business. It's, uh, all, it's all gone to India and to, to different countries all over the world. Uh, this is a global society now, and uh, help is cheaper elsewhere. I could, I could, I could be working. I mean, I could, I could get work as a, as a, doing this in China. I mean, that's been offered to me, and you know, but I don't want to live in China. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to teach someone. I mean, 45 years of experience, and why not? You know, um, I mean, at my age and my time in the industry, I would love to pass that on. They passed it on to me. And I would love to pass it on to someone else, but the way the industry is going, you know, I would, uh, I'd be hurting anybody to pass anything on to them. Uh, this, I, we don't know if there's going to be an industry here. Well, the way that it is, I, I, I able to stay, you know, I don't produce, I don't make the money that I used to make. Right now, I just uh, play survivor, you know. I, to stay around and make some money and uh, a little bit of money and uh, you know uh, it is a state the way it is I probably you know kind of stay a little bit longer but if it gets worse that I think is probably going to get worse I have to close the door.